Let us learn how to encode shared mutable st uh, state in an immutable language using immutable data structures. Um, so first, you might be wondering, why would I even care about immutability? If my language has mutability, uh, my favorite language has mutability, why should I even be learning how to write algorithms um, that just manipulate immutable data structures? Well, the main um, reason for you to learn immutability is that it greatly, greatly simplifies the code. So if you have any code base and you can write it in Java or you can write it in Python or you can write it in C or in C++ or whatever, if you write your data structures and you write them in an immutable way, it's always going to be easier to understand what's going on. And in fact, there's even some optimizations that can be done and are done when you write code in that way. Um, so for instance, if you use C++ or Rust, you can have data structures uh, move from one owner to the other and where an owner is, when you do a function call, you move the value from one from the caller to the call callee. Um, and when you do that, you actually don't need to copy the value around. So there are some already some existing um, optimizations in place to make uh, immutable data structure really fast. Um, so what we're so it's a very good practice to have because it makes understanding a code base way much simpler. You don't have to think about who is actually changing this data behind the behind your back while you're passing a data structures to another to another function and in fact some uh, programming languages even let you uh, tag your data with immutability constraints such as in C++ you can add an annotation saying that this data structure is or this value is const and that means that it will be read-only no, no if you pass it to a certain function, you know that it can't be changed. And that's a great property to know because it, you, have a, you can um, minimize bugs in that way. So that's mostly why I want you to learn. Another big reason is if you think about parallelizing your code or making your code faster, let's say you have some kind of uh, networking code, you usually want to make it um, to have multiple handlers and they will maybe be manipulating the same data. Um, having immutability makes all the al like any kind of concurrent or parallel algorithm much simpler to understand and also faster because you don't need to synchronize. You don't need locks, you don't need any kind of uh, protection on your data if the data is immutable. So to introduce mutability, we just have to implement it as a data structure. So let's represent a shared memory, which you are very familiar with. Um, and for that, we will have the basic constructs. And here we're just defining the, the next few slides. What I'm going to do is just introduce uh, the API that I'm, I then I'm going to show an implementation of of a heap data structure. And this means a shared memory heap, not a heap sort data structure. So we're gonna have, again, constructors and um, selectors. And we're gonna have an empty heap to represent an empty heap. So we use this constant to represent the empty heap. And then we're gonna have two two more constructors. The first one is we create a new, basically the alloc, which is equivalent to C's malloc. And then we're going to have something that updates um, a heap. So an already existing reference, you might want to update a value that is in that reference. So allocation, you allocate it with the value. And this is different than in C. In C, you, you say, how how big is my how many elements are in my array or how many bytes I want to allocate and what you get back is just a handle. But in, in, our, in our library, what we are defining is I want to store this value in the heap, somehow allocate a value there 
and give me the reference that points to that value. So that would be this operation. And next, what, I, what we have is heap put that will, given the heap, will update uh, a certain reference that I'm passing here, r, and I'm updating the value associated with r. And then the only thing that we need uh, is somehow a way to read a value from the heap, and we use heap get, and we pass the heap, and the second argument is the reference. So let's, um, in the next video, I'm just going to give you a few examples on how to use this API.